Welcome to the Do Make Something podcast. I'm your host, Jam Calpin, and I'm here every week to help you stop adulting from killing your creativity and to encourage you to create something to help your mental health. What's going on, guys? What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone is doing well. Staying safe out here on these crazy streets and protecting your mental mental and uh, doing well, being healthy. I'm chilling outside today because where my wife and I live, the walls are kind of thin and we're both working and recording content and so we don't want to interfere with one another. And I had a, a, a life coach counseling, a life coach session right before this. So I was out, outside taking my phone call, doing my session or whatever. Anyways, um, today, in today's episode, I wanted to talk about why suppressing your emotions is not healthy and why it's also so important to learn how to communicate. I think as black men, one, often we are not, we're not very, we're not encouraged or oftentimes equipped to be able to do the necessary work to communicate and share our emotions. And I think that sucks. <laughs> I think that, that that sucks a lot. And I feel bad for those who have to relate to us, whether it's older people or even women who relate to us when we get older and we're trying to date in court and all that stuff. Because, like, let, let's look at this. This is the reality situation, at least the way that I see it. So as young men, before that, actually, as young boys, we are cultivated and trained to live a certain way, you know? Like, there's certain stuff that's given to us and facil- uh, fed to us specifically so that we can become men, you know? And oftentimes, I would say, in our community, it doesn't really have a lot to do with actual relationships. It doesn't have a lot to do with relating with others, relating to ourselves, relating to other men, and definitely not relating to women. Um, We are given very limited tools to actually mature and understand ourselves and figure out how to process things and how to be healthy. Like, really... Oftentimes we are, we are pushed in certain um, veins and categories because that's what men are supposed to do. Black men are supposed to do. So like think about the idea of not being expressive. Like, you know, don't be a crybaby, you know, stuff like that. And they're, 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 don't be soft. Like, or, you know, I know it's controversial now. And I mean, it was controversial then, but like, don't do that. That's gay. <laughs> you know, like... Let's be honest about it. Like there, there's so much in our culture and in our community that is looked down upon, even though it could be healthy aspects. So like the idea of crying or being sensitive, it's actually healthy for us to have emotions. It's healthy for us to know what to do with those emotions and how to communicate them. And it's healthy to feel. But very often in our community, we've been deprived of that. And it sucks because I know over time, It's things that have been generational, you know, like our parents um, and their grandparents and so on and so forth. You know, for a very long time, the idea of being expressive in a healthy way, um, communicating how you feel and things like that has been looked down upon, frowned upon, um, because being sensitive or, or emoting or expressing yourself in a healthy way has been looked at as a weakness, as something that you can uh, take advantage of. And it sucks, and it's, of course it's it's misogynistic, but you know we're often told that those kind of attributes are specifically feminine or towards women or girls. And the thing is, both men and women are designed with feelings and designed with emotions. And sure, we're wired differently, and we experience things differently. We also express things differently. But it's not going to be helpful in the long run if we're not equipped as men, if we're not equipped with what to do with those emotions or how to express those things or to tell somebody how I feel. You know, like there's a handful of emotions or ways of expressing ourselves that are have been acceptable in our in our culture and in our community. And it can be anger. Um, it can be like distress or sadness, but it's for specific things. You know, it's only for specific things. You can't be sad or expressive or you know, have certain feelings, like, for example, like, 
if you're a kid and like say you like dropped your ice cream or something like that as a child you know your expression is like i'm sad <laughs> i just i just lost the ice cream i really wanted that and you know i'm sure they're everybody's experience is different but i know oftentimes in our community and in our culture if something like that happens to a young boy it's like don't cry what you crying for like get over it you know stop being soft why are you crying that's gay <laughs> you know stuff like that and but it's okay to cry <laughs> you know it's okay to express yourself and be sad um, does that mean you have to constantly cry does that mean you can't understand how to emote that what you need to emote and then like move on and heal from it no like you're supposed to do that you know you can like if you're son or nephew or you know little brother or whatever drops something like yeah you know that is sad it's it's okay it's okay to cry but you know we can get another ice cream or if we can't it's all right you know like that, that's fine so it's okay to be sad but you don't have to be there this whole time you know like be sad and you move on you know and why i think this is so important in regards to like why we need why, why we need to as men as black men why it's so important for us to learn how to communicate our emotions is because we have been taught for a very long time to suppress those emotions, to suppress those emotions. And the sad part is when we get to a place when um, as we mature, as we become adults and stuff like that, we've been taught to suppress our, suppress our emotions for so long that when we are trying to relate to women, uh, those of the opposite sex or whatever, we're trying to relate to anybody. If we don't know how to communicate those things, when we get to a place where we feel overwhelmed or stressed or something like that, we blow up, we explode. Or sometimes people just shut down altogether. Like you can either, I would say those are the extremes that I've seen. You blow up or you completely shut down and you just retreat. And either way, like it's not effective communication. Because if you're blowing up about something, you're not, you're not specifically communicating the thing that's really bothering you, you know, like that's pent up stuff, things that's been bottled up for a long time. And now all of it's going to pour out and now it's going to be confusing to understand, well, what's the thing that actually hurt you or the thing that actually bothered you or, you know, stressed you out. But when you have all this fire and this, this flame and like this, this uh, pressure coming out, it's going to be unclear. And then if you retreat, if you shut down and close yourself off, nobody's going to know anything. You're probably not even going to know anything because, again, we've been taught to just suppress our feelings. So we just swallow it up, keep quiet, and keep it moving. But again, that's not healthy. That's not helping you and it's not helping those who actually care about you and, and want to, you know, have better things for you. You know, if, if your friend or your spouse or whatever, anybody else that you're relating to that actually cares about you, like they want to understand. Like that's the whole point of communication is so that we can understand one another, so that we can uh, effectively relate to one another. But it's not going to be helpful if you don't know how to communicate your emotions and your feelings. And so like one thing, I'm going to see if I can pull it up and show you on my phone. And for those who are listening to the podcast, what I'm pulling up is something called an emotional, an emotion wheel. And so it's a diagram that, and there, there are various ones, you know, so like I just grabbed one off of, um, offline and you can just search for it and it will come up. Here we go. So it looks like that. And like I said, for <laughs> those watching on uh, YouTube, I'll probably just copy and paste it in there. But, you know, what, what you have here is a range of common emotions, you know. And the thing about it is learning how to communicate is important because you need to pinpo pinpoint those emotions so that you can be like, all right, this is what I'm feeling in this moment. And now I can effectively communicate that. It's really just a, a pinwheel. And I'm, I'm describing this again for those who are listening, uh, listen to the podcast and can't see the video. Um, again, also thank you guys for um, watching or listening. Really, really appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, like, share, subscribe, and 
if you're on the podcast, leave me a review, you know, and share it with somebody that you care about. Share it with another brother um, that needs help, <laughs> who, who needs help, you know, and they, they need to understand that, like, we need to get better with our mental health and creativity is one way to do that. Um, so, like, in this pinwheel or in this diagram, the center circle is, like, your major emotion. So, they have, like, sad, mad, scared, joyful, powerful, peaceful. And then from there, there's a, another circle, and it gives you a finer tuned detail of what emotions may be there. So let's look at peaceful. Peaceful breaks down into content, thoughtful, intimate, loving, trusting, nurturing. Then it moves further out. And again, this is the diagram that I used or that I found. There are tons of other ones. But you move out to the furthest circle, and that goes to pensive, relaxed responsive, serene, sentimental, thankful. And looking at and using this kind of diagram, it's, it's helpful because, again, we, I'm going to speak for myself. I know like there are a lot of times I wasn't necessarily taught how to communicate my feelings. And I don't blame anybody, really, because oftentimes our parents aren't equipped with that stuff because their parents weren't equipped with that stuff. And again, in the black community and our, and our culture and stuff like that, nobody ain't got time for that. You know, like you really just, <laughs> you need to get over it. You need to get over it, whatever these feelings are and do what you need to do. And stuff like that, that leads to dealing with our emotions and our stress and stuff like that and our mental health by using vices. So, you know, I, I feel this way. I can't communicate it, but I need to find a way to comfort myself. So I turn to drugs or I turn to sex or pornography or whatever. Like you turn to these things, but it never really identifies the issue and it never really fixes the problem. But it's important. It's important that we do the work so that we can better communicate what's going on in our minds and in our hearts. And that ultimately helps us with our mental health as well. Because if we're carrying all this stress and all this baggage and things like that, that can lead to depression. That can lead to anxiety. It can just completely throw us off. And our mental health is, Im- is important. And it's a big part of our overall health as well. And how we show up and relate to other people and how we show up and, and live for ourselves, you know? Like, it's so important that we do that. It's so important that we do that. And I think, again, um, like I've mentioned before, taking the time to journal, which is a creative way, or doing a video or a vlog or something so that you can have that emotional release valve so that you can express yourself the best way that you can. And even, again, like having having a tool like this, an emotional diagram or wheel or whatever, you can be journaling and like, what word on here captures how I'm feeling the best? You know, so if you're journaling or you're doing a vlog or whatever art that you're doing, or if you're painting or, or drawing or something like that, like, well, I want to capture, you know, say I'm feeling like... This, okay, so going from the center again, scared as a major emotion. So I'm feeling scared, but more, more specifically, what do I feel? I feel helpless. Um, and then go out furthermore, it says insignificant. So the art that you're making or whatever you're trying to communicate, you're like, you know what? This happened at my job today. And, you know, uh, I had a conversation with my boss and they kind of like reprimanded me. And... I feel scared. I feel scared that if I lose this job, I won't be able to provide for my family. I won't be able to provide for my family. And you may go even more detailed and you'd be like, I feel helpless. I really do. I feel helpless. Like if I lose this job, I don't have any other options. So I feel helpless. Like I, I, I need this. I need this to work. And that can go even further on. You can communicate that like, you know, I, it makes me feel insignificant then. You know, if I don't work, if I don't provide for my family, if I don't do these things, if I'm not paying these bills, I don't matter, you know, and you can see like that scared is broad, but you can go more and more detailed and figure out like, I'm sure if you're communicating that to a friend or for those who are married, you're communicating that to your spouse or whatever, like that, that, that does so much more than you just getting upset or blowing up or you just retreating. And not communicating things, you know, like 
communicating that I feel scared, I feel helpless, I feel insignificant because of these reasons, now helps people to better understand where you are. And it helps you to understand like, wow, like I never really realized that about myself, you know, that the heart of it and putting words to it so that you can communicate and understand for yourself. Now I can try to address this issue. Why do I feel insignificant? And what can I do about that? You know, but not keep, sorry, I'm trying to kill something, (laughs) but not knowing that, not knowing how to communicate that just leaves all that stuff there and it becomes suppressed. And now that's going to lead to depression. It can, it can lead to depression. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to a variety of things. And we're not being mentally healthy. We're not being emotionally healthy. And that stops us. That stops us from being who we're supposed to be and being effective for those around us and that we love and that we care about. So again, I I would recommend a resource like this. Again, uh, you can just Google this or (laughs) for those who don't like Google like me, just search it. You can search it online for an emotional emotions wheel maybe is probably the best word and and emotions wheel and it should be a diagram like the one i'm sharing um a diagram that gives you an option and puts words to particular feelings and emotions so that you can better understand yourself and so that you can better communicate the things that are going on with you it's so important it's so important because again as black men we haven't always been equipped with those things to really communicate how we feel outside of i would say the most general Things that we may communicate are like, again, using these six, it might be mad, scared, and maybe joyful, you know? And, but using this tool can help it be more clear. It can help it be, uh, we can get better understanding of ourselves, you know? And we need that so that we can be free so that we can be healthy, you know, and our, our mental health and our emotional health. And it's, it's super important. It's super important. So again, I would recommend checking that out, finding, finding a, an emotions wheel to better grasp and understand what's going on with you, you know, seriously. Well, that's it guys for today's episode. <clears throat> I didn't bring the water out here. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Thanks for listening to the show. Um, for those who are listening on the podcast, and thanks for watching the show. For those who are watching online on YouTube, um, for those checking out the podcast on YouTube, I got a script here. Okay, I haven't got good at this thing yet, so I got a script. I'm reading a script. For those checking out the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And for those listening on your favorite po- podcasting app, you know, leave a, a iTunes review um, and share it with somebody on youtube or podcast share it with somebody i really 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 appreciate that and rate it i think you can rate it on different podcasting apps but definitely itunes or apple podcast five star and a review really really appreciate it um so yeah leave a comment subscribe follow thanks for all that all this stuff so thanks again for tuning in uh, until the next episode until the next episode find some time to go make something it's good for you and for those who matter to you i'll see you guys peace